So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a duplicate stitch or sometimes known as Swiss darning. And what this mending technique is good for is for a sock or garment that has an area that is worn in and a hole hasn't been quite created yet. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be duplicating these stitches here. And since the area, the worn in area is about this big, I'm going to start kind of just below it over here. And so what you want to do is you want to have your needle come up on the section that has like the, where, where it's joined in the V. So just at the bottom of the V there. And so the needle will come up from there. And I usually leave sort of like a tail that I weave in later because since you're going to be wearing this, you don't really want to be stepping on a knot. And so this gets woven in so it stays nice and flat. So what you want to do is you want your needle to come through on the right side of that V to the left side. And then you want to just pull it. And then you want to put your needle back down where you started at that bottom point of the V and you want the needle to come up on the stitch just beside it at the bottom of the V. And then you're going to just pull it and you want to be kind of mindful of your tension so that it's not too, too tight. So the same thing, you're going to go from right to left. And then when you come down to the bottom of the V and then on to the next one beside it. So you're just going to be repeating this. And so now we are on that first area where it's worn in. And if you find that when you're mending this area and there's a bit of a gap, because sometimes the hole is kind of too far gone, um, what you can, what will happen is when you do the next row, that will hopefully kind of join in together, but if it doesn't, you can always do sort of like a, a little whip stitch or something, but let's see what happens. And I'm using um, a sock weight yarn, which I think it's really important to use a yarn that's very similar or even th uh, a little bit thinner. You don't want something that's too thick because um, I find that it makes it much more difficult to do it on something that's kind of finely knit like this. Okay, I'm going to do a few more stitches because the worn in area is just over here. So I'm going to go over a little bit more. And then I'm going to show you how um, I do the next row. Out of the different sort of mending techniques that I've shown you, I feel like this one is the one that is probably takes a little bit more of a learning curve. So you might have to practice a few times um, before it becomes comfortable. But I do feel that having the correct weight of yarn really helps. Okay, so now we're gonna do the next row. So when you stick your needle in the bottom of that V, you want to, I'm just going to turn this around a bit, you want the needle to come up just above where you went in because it's going to be coming through at the bottom of the V that's above it. Okay, so you can see it's sort of coming out that way. And then you, um, you do the same thing. You're going from um, right to left again. And then you're going to put your needle at the bottom of that V and then it's going to come up to the next stitch beside it. And if you're using like, um, like the same yarn as what you um, did to make the, the sock, it would be essentially invisible. So that's a really nice option. You can fix it and not even notice. But you can also experiment and if you want it to be more visible, you can sort of do like a patchwork and use different colors. I feel like that's kind of um, 
interesting, and that's what I've been kind of playing around with. So what I'm doing is um, coming up from the bottom of that V, and what this is doing is going over that area that's been worn in with the yarn, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of give it a little bit more strength so you have a little bit more wear with the sock. So there was a little gap there. Let's see if this kind of closes it up a bit. I think it does. And also, because they're all kind of connected, these stitches, right? It um, gives it strength too, like it's all kind of connected. So right to left. And what you're doing is you're creating a V shape. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I do this part. It's very similar to the other side. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of that V and then come up one stitch. So it's just a little bit. I find this part kind of tricky. There we go. Okay, and then same thing, right to left. I'm gonna do this one more row because I think you get the idea. I find um, I find doing these stitches quite enjoyable. It's sort of nice to see them um, duplicate the other stitch and the way it's sort of integrated into the piece. So there you have it. So this is the duplicate stitch, or also known as Swiss darning. Thank you for watching.